Sarah, and I am going to be demonstrating for you today what I would keep in my occupational therapy toolkit if I was ever to work in speech. Um, I have a couple of different categories of things and lots of items that I could use with kids. Um, I think it's important to remember with kids to always bring lots of options. Not every kid is going to like the same toy, not every kid is going to be able to use every toy. So I wanted to provide a couple of options in case that did happen, and that way I have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan B, and so on. So the first category of things that I want to use my toolkit is fine motor manipulation. So I have a lot of different uh, prongs and things like that that will work on not only fine motor coordination, but hand strengthening and getting that really good uh, grasp and fist. Um, this can be used to pick up small objects and move them. Um, these can be used in different ways with different materials, depending on what kind of um, grip they have on the end there. Um, I also have a couple of tools that work on just the thumb. Isolating that thumb movement is a huge tool readiness skill um, because it helps you manipulate objects and do what you want to do in the fist setting. So this is actually like a pickle grabber that can be used to, you know, pick up small objects or cotton balls or something and move them into another area we can use the fist in the same sort. Uh, the next category of things that I have would want in my toolkit are for writing. A lot of the activities that we use for evaluation and assessment require a child to hold on to a pencil to, you know, make scribbles or draw their name or whatever. But if I go to a kid and they can't hang on to a pencil, then that is kind of scary. So um, here's one tool that I could use to build up a pencil. It's actually just a foil. And you stick it in here, the pencil stays, and that way it builds up the pencil enough that they can um, grab onto it and complete their writing activity. Um, I also have a couple of other little uh, grippy things that could be used depending on the child's preference and what's most comfortable for them. Um, this little tool here is actually a really cool one that I like to keep. Um, some kids just aren't getting that tripod grasp, especially with the age level that I've been working with, ages you know, three to young five. Um, but they like to use this adaptive tripod where the pencil goes kind of like in between that index finger but they're still using the fingers to manipulate it. And so this is a really good tool um, for pre-tripod grasp, I would say. Um, it's very effective for a lot of kids that are having trouble with that kind of thing. Another evaluation tool that we use a lot is cutting. Um, but like I said, some kids haven't even learned that skill yet. And so before we teach them, um, I give them one of our adaptive little scissors here. So all this requires is for them to squeeze it shut. Um, in order to cut the paper. I also have a little bit of a smaller one for the younger kids. Um, it's easier when they're just starting to learn how to sniff and that kind of thing. Um, we actually did an assessment at a kid's house and he was a uh, young three and um, his hands were so small that they couldn't even grab onto that. And so I would want to keep these um, smaller scissors in my toolkit and his hands fit just perfectly in here. Um, and we taught him how to open and close and manipulate his position that way. So that was really the next category of things that I have is for proprioceptive and vestibular input. Um, one thing that I've seen used a lot at my favorite site has been um, these weighted vests for our autistic kids. Um, this just gives them the proprioceptive input that they need in order to focus um, so that they can have that input and focus their attention on something else rather than seeking that sensory um, experience there. I also have a, a small weighted medicine ball. So this could be used for that proprioceptive input if you're just playing with them. Um, it helps them focus on that. It can also be used as an upper extremity strengthening tool. Um, if a child has low tone or a decreased strength in the upper extremity, you can catch with this ball. You can start by rolling it and then having them try to throw it to you a little bit at a very close range, of course, for these young kids. Another thing that I would want in my toolkit is oral motor exercise tools. A lot of the kids that I've seen have poor oral tone. Um, I see a lot of drooling and just messy eating with the food all over their face because they can't keep them in their mouth. They can't chew with their mouth closed. Um, so a couple of things, just one of these little wind things. This can be fun for kids just to blow. And it spins like that and it's fun. Um, another tool, and this is very simple, is just a straw and some cotton balls. Um, you can play games on a tabletop with blowing the, your cotton ball and seeing you can cross the line first. Um, or for other kids, you can use um, these noise-making little tools here. And that can be fun. They get the auditory input that they're looking for, but they're also working on their oral tone. 
Another thing that I found to be helpful to have on hand at all times is just like little fidgets. Things like this, you can kind of squeeze it and the litter and stuff goes all over. Um, some of our autistic kids really love these tools. It really helps them to just calm and kind of find their center before they go on to another activity. Um, another thing would be like these squish toys um, and stuff like that. Um, we also have one of these little uh, cooch balls. Um, this one can also be effective in detecting if a child has tactile defensiveness because that's kind of pokey edges. It's a little bit of a different material. So we can tell if they're having trouble, you know, eating or touching certain foods. Maybe we get them this and they resist it. Then we know that they have some kind of tactile defensiveness that we need to work on. Um, in that case, I would maybe go to a brush, a brushing technique. Um, I'm obviously not trained in any kind of official brushing, um, but this is just good for that appropriate type of input on the arm, on the back of the neck, or, you know, whatever's beneficial for that child. The last category of things that I have here is for bilateral coordination. Um, I find that's a very good readiness skill for kids to be able to manipulate objects using both hands and them to the midline. So I have these little um, boxes here, and they actually open. And these are fun because you can um, hide little things in them, but it does require the child to use that little coordination to open and close. This can also be a fun matching and sequencing because you can see I have a little blue bunny in my blue box. And um, you know you can switch them around with the different colored boxes and have them try to match those, and they're using a lot of skills for that type of activity. Um, the last thing I have are these little puzzle pieces. Um, this is good for sequencing and matching as well, um, as well as visual perception. So I would lay a bunch of different pieces out for the child and see if they can find the two that match and actually put them together. So a lot of the tools in my kit, like I said, I have a lot of um, tools here, but different categories of things just to make sure that I have what the child's going to be interested in and that I can work on those um, skills that the pediatric population really needs to be successful in school. So I hope you enjoyed my OT toolkit for today.